good morning. So marathon training, week two, day two, long run. So today it is 12 miles. Just gonna come to a stop in a minute. So uh, yesterday's base layer, three miles, today 12. So not only am I on a 12 bar run, I'm testing out camera angles. Um, going portrait last week, try and landscape to see if it makes a difference when I upload it to YouTube. As you can see, I've got a collar, got a freaking coat on. The weather is abysmal. Now it's the real test. I've just left my house. That was my little warm up run that I was doing when I started, just to get my legs moving. It is pissing down. So I've got this coat on to kind of try and keep me dry to start with. I have run half marathon in bit of horrific weather before now. Um, but when you're not actually racing, it's not as much fun and it doesn't make you want to do it. Anyhow, if I get too hot later on, I'll take the coat off and I run in a t-shirt. And if it gets too wet and too horrible, then I will take the decision and I will abandon the run. I mean, it's only week two, it's only a training run. I'm not getting the medal for this, I'm not getting the t-shirt. I'm doing it for me, I'm doing it for the long haul. So yeah, I will abandon if necessary. And at the moment, I feel like abandoned already, it's miserable. So anyway, my legs are moving now, my heart rate is up, so I'm gonna get on with a run and I might check up with you somewhere in the middle of the run. So, I am now six miles in, so I'm halfway through today's run. I had to stop to take all this off, so I thought I'd talk to you while I stop. Okay, so fueling. I usually fuel on six miles when I do a long run. Um, here it is, if I can find it. I don't know what I've done with it. I'll put it, I've so many pockets in this bag. It's such a good bag. Here it is. Now, I showed you one of these the other day. Now, I've done this while I've stopped because they're only a tear. But when you're running, these things can be impossible to open. Now, if anyone that runs knows, they are so difficult. So I'll just stick that back in my bag on the litter. That's it, gone. That's all it is. It is 30 grams, I believe, of energy. 60 mils. So it's about 60 grams there with that Now that should last an hour when I've got an hour left of my run. However, I am going to um, try having a couple more. I wonder if I'm not quite taking enough as I run. It slows me down a little. Your body actually has enough energy and glycogen. If you're fueled properly, hang on. Leading up to your run through your week, your body has enough energy glycogen stores for an hour to an hour and a half worth of running and training. So one of them just replenishes your uh, stores. You'll see a lot of marathon runners and half marathon runners taking sweets and things like that. It's just to get a little bit of sugar in, up the glycogen stores to give you the energy to continue your run. I'm just gonna wash it down with water because they are sticky in, in your throat, which is why you have to um, test these things on your training runs. If you go out and try taking some of these on a marathon you can end up in a toilet some of them got caffeine in them some have got diuretics in them they upset your stomach so always do it beforehand okay right drink back in my bag that will do me for the rest of the day you only need a couple of sips otherwise it runs in your body so today's shirt look flow and co that is my running team and a slogan the body will only do what the mind will let it that is my mantra this up here will go up before my body does. I know my body can do a marathon. It's this that I've got to train to make sure that it doesn't give up. Anyway, back on with a run for a cool down. Catch you later. <laughs> yeah. So, that's it. The 12 miles is done. As you can tell by my breathing, I'm feeling really good, really comfortable. 
I'm glad that's in the bag. It was stopped two hours. So now, just jogging down to a really slow mart. Mart? Just a trot and then I'll grab myself coffee and biscuits. Then home for breakfast. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Let's see if we can get a little following going. Because you never know who's watching. You never know who needs motivation. And we never know who needs some inspiration and even some tips on what they should be doing for a marathon. So this is my post run breakfast fuel. 50 grams of oats, 100 mils of almond milk, left overnight, then microwaved. I'm gonna add a scoop of protein powder, one banana, 75 mils of fat-free Greek yogurt, and a bowl of blueberries. There it is, none of my food ever looks glamorous. I don't go for the look of food, I go for what's in it. And this is 680 calories, but more importantly, it's got 88 grams of carbohydrates to replace all the glycogen that I've used on my run, and 46 grams of protein. So that will set me up to recover well. So this is my lunch. Two bagel, a bit of tomato sauce, three eggs, scrambled. Once again, not worried about what it looks like, but it's full of protein and full of carbs. So this is another one of my go-to snacks. I have it this time of night at work. Look at it, 22 grams of protein. Look at that, beautiful. Only 164 calories as well. So one of them, and they're about 75p from Aldi. Cheapest chips. If you can get the salted caramel ones, they, in my opinion, are the best. In case you're thinking FK is clean, I have some rainbow cookies to have my coffee later. Now the problem that most runners have is they run and then they eat cake. But well, what they don't realize is they overeat and put on excess calories. Okay, so this is my dinner, cottage pie, except I put my own twist on it. I use extra lean turkey mince and I use baked beans. There is actually 200 grams of turkey mince, 200 grams of potatoes, a third of a tin of beans, 30 grams of cheese, plus me gravy. I have to have it like this because I'm at work and it's all microwavable. But the great thing about this meal is it's filling. It's a huge 70 grams of protein, 67 grams of carbohydrates, and it goes down an absolute treat. So my final meal of the day, 100 mils of almond milk boiled in the microwave, three Weetabix and a scoop of protein powder, which brings my daily totals up to 2,250 calories, 170 grams of protein, and 259 grams of carbohydrates. All ready, all recovered, all refreshed to go again tomorrow if I need be. Good morning everyone. So it is week two, day four. I did base run three miles Monday. I did a long run, 12 miles Tuesday. Yesterday was my rest day, but I ended up finding myself in the gym doing um, just a light workout. I didn't go too heavy because obviously your body needs to rest, your body needs to recover. However, I don't do sitting around. I don't do rest days. I don't do just lying about doing nothing. I had to go out and do something. So I went to the gym. Today is a six mile, or as we say, 10K. Starting my day with a nice cup of coffee and my usual two digestive biscuits. That is my fuel before I run. No matter what I run, I always tend to run on that and that is my daily routine. I don't eat breakfast till about one o'clock. I get my morning out of the way and then I eat. I say one o'clock, sometimes it's a bit earlier. Today will probably be around one. Time I run, have a rest, get a coffee, come home again, I'll eat then. But that's fine for me. I can get away with that because I fuel properly through the week. Now, usual thing, I've got my uh, trainers ready to go on, a pair of nights. Standard trainer. They won't be my running trainers for the marathon. Um, Hopefully, birthday on Monday, I'm getting a new pair. I know I'm getting a new pair of trainers because I bought them. 
Um, so they will be my marathon trainers and I will wear them towards the end of my training just to break them in a bit. A, so I don't wear them too much. B, to make sure that they don't cause me any grief. If I start wearing them on Monday when I get them, they're gonna be ruined. And also I could turn the ankles, I could unbalance them ready for the run. So I just wanna break them in slowly and gently. So the last few weeks is when I'll start to wear them more and more. Anyway, legs don't feel too bad after the 12 miles on Tuesday. The issue I have is my knees. Now I've had operations and I get osteoarthritis in my knees, so they swell up a bit. And when I'm in bed at night, I lean on them and they ache. They have this throbbing, aching pain. But I have to be grateful that I have still got my knees in working order and I can still do the things that I do. Anyway, that's two and a half minutes of waffle, giving you a little update on what I'm about to do today. Um, I've been outside and it is raining and it is cold. So I'm going to nip upstairs and grab my jacket before I run. I'm not going out in just a t-shirt because I'll get soaking wet. When I go for coffee, I'll sit wet. So I'm going to take a jacket, keep me as dry as possible. The last thing I want to do is interrupt my training by getting ill by being brave. Right, I'll catch you on the run. So I've left the house and as you can see by the surroundings, it's pretty damp, pretty raining, hence having my old football jacket on. It doesn't really keep me that dry. It's not waterproof, it's just a shower jacket, but it will do just to keep me for the first three or four miles. The last two don't matter because you'll already be wet. Race days and park run days, running in the rain doesn't matter. But when you're just out training, it's a lot harder to do it. And you don't have a lot of motivation to keep going when you get pissed and wet. So that's what makes rain so difficult for running. Although it is an ideal um, temperature, the rain keeps you cool. It's never any fun. Okay, that's it for me. I'll check back in a bit later, maybe when I've finished, tell you how I'm feeling. Here we are again. So, four and a half miles in. As you can see, the jacket has come off. The rain stopped. I again started overheating. So it's tied around my waist. Been listening to a podcast, Peter Crouch podcast, got about seven minutes left. Not feeling this run today at all. A little bit bored. I'm actually starting to feel a little bit thirsty. Now, if I was in a race, 10K, I would fuel up on the way because they'd have drinks for you. But I don't like carrying stuff, I can help it. Anything less than a 10K, I won't carry um, and I won't refuel. I could do 10K without any water or any fuel. Longer than that, I would think about water whether carrying in a bag or whether stopping at a shop and grabbing a bottle while I'm out and about on my route just to rehydrate stop me getting headaches a bit more energy keeps you fresh so I've literally got about a mile left then I can have coffee and I always have a couple of glasses of water with my coffee so another day done tomorrow is cross training which is doing a different kind of exercise. So, riding a bike, uh, rowing. I'm going to do gym, lifting weights. So that'll be my cross training. And then Saturday's a six mile run. But as I do a park run with my grandson, we do three. I'll probably just leave it at three this week. I'll be three miles short, but it's not an issue this time, purely because about 12 weeks out still, so near in time, I have to stick to it regimented. Okay, well, I'm running along the road, so we'll cut you off. Catch you next week. Okay, guys, I am back. I know I said I'll see you next week, but I finished my run, and I've actually finished it only a minute outside my PB, which was set about five years ago. So all this extra running, all this extra training is actually paying dividends. Um, my plan time was one hour seven and I was well ahead of that 
So that's something I have to be careful of going forward, is um, I'm not overrunning myself and burning myself out too early on in my training. But I was so happy with my time, especially with stopping doing a couple of videos and taking my coat off and that. Yeah, pretty good. So I will definitely leave it until I see you again for week three. Go. Good morning. So back on my vlog, marathon training, week two, day five. So far this week, I have covered the 24 miles, two training sessions in the gym. Today's supposed to be a six miler, but as I'm doing park run with grandson, you go there he is, give us a wave. I've done about a half mile run to the park run, seems to be parked miles away. Three miles, so I'll be about two and a half miles short, but it's very heavy ground running around a park. So the extra effort in the legs will make up for the mileage. Okay, we'll get back to it. We're running at a pace around 31 minutes for the 5k. So nice and steady recovery run. Right, that's it for the week. Well done, I'll well come done. back and I'll catch you next week. And I dropped